I think pregnancy is a lot more powerful than we're led to believe. So when your baby's born, they turn face down to come out. My baby did not turn face down, so he was, uh, they call them stargazers. He was just face up and not doing the turn to come out. I was put in the operating room. She's in there with the forceps and she's like, says to me, I'm trying really hard not to um, tear your perineum. And I was like, just fucking cut it. And so she was like, okay, cut, boom, baby out. Because I didn't feel anything. And at that point, I was like, I don't give a shit about my perineum. I put my baby out. The concept of a home birth was so appealing to me because I loved the way my midwives wanted to empower me. And my home birth experience was incredible. It was far and away one of the best days of my life. The Ring of Fire is referred to lovingly in natural birth as the moment when the child's head comes right out of the vagina and you feel it. My midwife's like, all right, grab the belly band. And we're like, what's the belly band for? And she takes the belly band and she like wraps it around my belly. And she and my sister lifted my daughter up, like on the outside, lifted her and then just shoved her over into my birth canal. Technically when they want you to give birth, you know, they want you to give birth at 38 weeks, like 38 to 40. Well, I was at 41 weeks and three days. They wanted to send me in for a stress test. So when I went to go leave for the hospital, I actually sat in the car and my water broke. When my contractions first started, it's like putting on a super tight waist trainer and not being able to take it off and kind of having to break through the waist trainer to relieve the pain. I had two kids that were born at 28 weeks whose lungs weren't developed enough, who needed assistance for ventilators. When the first baby uh, came out, there was just like four or five people just went like on just getting him all hooked up because he had to be on a ventilator. He was, um, well, I found this out later, but two pounds, four ounces. He was really sick. Baby B, who we named because we knew it was two boys, his name was Jacob. He came out and again, it was just that swarm of people getting him ready and saving his life. My son stayed at a negative one which wasn't coming past the birth canal. So at nine and a half centimeters, she goes, okay, well, he hasn't moved down. I think we're gonna have to take you back for a C-section. She said, well, you know, your temperature is rising, your heart rate is lowering, the baby's heart rate is lowering, you're developing an infection in your, in your uterus and we don't want it to pass on to the baby. The doctor came in and said that one of their lungs had collapsed, so they needed to insert a chest tube to try to build it back up. And then a few hours later, we find out the second baby had the same thing. They put these clamps in your stomach, and when they reach your abdomen, they use these clamps to stretch open your abdominal walls. And when they put those clamps in and they stretched, I felt everything. The second I saw my son, you forget that you're going through these massive amounts of pain and these massive amounts of anxiety, you see the one love of your life that you've been waiting for your entire life. I reached down and I got to feel my daughter coming out and pull her out and look at her and see her eyes open for the very first time to see me. He got handed to daddy first and I was like, what the F? He got to see him first. They came home March 9th, 2009 and I was fortunate they never had to go back.